الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم My dear respected viewers of Madani channel We welcome you in our new program called The Way of the Prophet صلى الله تعالى عليه وآله وسلم And today an interesting topic we've brought for you that is importance of sunnah respect viewers be with us from start to end an immense amount of knowledge inshallah azza wa jal will try to share and you'll be getting the opportunity to learn but before we proceed ahead towards our topic of the day let's make few good intentions ma shaykh tariqat amir of ahli sunnah hazrat alama maulana muhammad ilyas attar qadri damat barakatuhum al aliya gives us a beautiful mindset to make good intentions before performing any permissible task or any good deed As I am presenting this program, I make this intention, I will do this for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are watching this program, you can make this intention, you will watch this program from start to end. You will remember what you learn, act upon and pass this knowledge on to others too. Respectively viewers, the more intentions one makes for a particular task or good deed, he can easily multiply the reward. And I encourage you, as many good intentions as possible you can make for this particular watching of program in order to add good deeds in your book of deeds. Alhamdulillah, today uh, Brother Muballigh of Dawat Islami, Brother Waqqas Attari joins me in this program. Let's go towards him. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Waqqas, bhai, how are you doing? Alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, yourself. I'm good too. Alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Ala kulli hal. Jazakallahu khayna. Thank you very much once again giving us your precious time and joining in this program. Waqqas, bhai, today we are talking about importance of sunnah. Importance of Sunnah, when we talk about this word, Alhamdulillah, many of our viewers, they already uh, should be aware of the fact that Quran and Sunnah, these two words, they always go together. Right? Oh, yes. And the importance of Quran and Sunnah, Alhamdulillah, every believer has in his or her mind. But today, uh, mostly the Quran being the source of uh, uh, knowledge for a believer, is there people have got an understanding it is book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it has got the importance what it bears but as far as the sunnah is concerned uh, sometimes due to lack of knowledge people they seem to neglect the importance of sunnah and uh, that is the reason we brought this topic so that we can highlight how important this uh, subject is so that we can learn about it and we can understand what is the importance of Sunnah in Quran and Ahadith, even stated by Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam and the act of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam and then the act of Sahaba Ikram alayhim ridwan, the way they copied, the way they followed, the way they did ittiba of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, obeyed Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam, followed the teachings of Islam. Uh, first of all, I would like to request you if you could shed some light from Quran, how important it is to follow Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam, how important it is to do ittiba of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides us in this regard. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Rizwabai, what do we need to understand that the primary source of the sacred law sharia is the holy Quran, it is. which is the word of Allah azza wa jal. But it's impossible for us to understand the Quran without the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. No doubt at all. Allah azza wa jalla has sent us a message. There are many messages in the Quran, but I'll give you an example. When we go to study a university course, we we can't understand that course without a teacher. That's true. So this is the example of the Quran and Sunnah. For example, we need the Quran. The Quran is there, the sacred law for us to understand that, to act upon that, to establish that within our lives. We need the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the teachings. Of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There are many 
ayahs in the Quran, Allah has told us to follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is very important. You know, some people today, they say, oh, you know, I've got the Quran, I don't need anything else, mm -hmm. I don't need you know, to act upon the Sunnah. And especially you see that in our youth today, that we are going far away from Sunnahs. Oh, where, is, where does this say in the Quran? Where has this come from? You know, I only follow the Quran. Mm -hmm. Let's go and see what does Allah Azza wa Jalla say about following the Sunnah and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's mentioned in Surah Al-Anfal, verse number 20. The translation is, O believers, obey Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and turn not away from Him after hearing Him. Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. Subhan. And don't turn away. So whatever Allah and His Messenger. You know, many times in the Quran, you see that it says, Allah and His Rasul. Allah and His Rasul. Yeah? So sometimes it's just Allah. Allah and His Rasul, so many times have come together to show the importance of following the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's also been mentioned Surah Al-Anfal and obey Allah and His Messenger and dispute not with one another. Otherwise, you will show timidity. So again, obey Allah and His Messenger. So Allah could have said, so obey me. He says, obey Allah and obey the Messenger as well. So again, in Surah Al-Nisa, and we did not send any Messenger that he should be obeyed by Allah's will. Remember, by following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are also following the command of Allah So, it's not just following Rasulullah. When you follow Rasulullah, when you follow the sunnah of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are also following the commands of the Quran which Allah has given us. No doubt. So, that is also something we should keep in mind. Whatever Allah has told us, follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are obeying both Allah and His beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another beautiful ayah of the Holy Quran is Surah Ali Ibrahim. There are many ayahs been mentioned. It says, O oh, beloved, say, O oh, people, if you love Allah, then follow me. Allah will love you. Subhanallah. Can you imagine that? If you love Allah, what do you, it doesn't say if you love Allah, read the read Quran. If you love Allah, go read Salah. If you love Allah, go to do Hajj. If you love Allah, then follow me. Allah will love you. So we all want the love of Allah in our lives. We all want Allah to love us. So the, the key has been given to us. If you want Allah to love you, <laughs> what do you do? If you love Allah, follow me. This is the key. Follow me. The teacher, the course is there for us to learn, to teach, to take. Follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, you'll be obeying Allah. Again in Surah Nisa, it says, Then, O beloved, by your Lord, there should not be Muslims until they make you judge in all disputes among themselves. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is the one to solve the disputes as well for us. This again, see how many eyes of the Quran Allah has mentioned about the importance of following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One thing we lack today in today's society is that we have forgotten to read the Quran. Those of us who read the Quran, what happens is we don't read the translation. We don't read the commentary. The Quran is there for us. What is Allah saying to me? Why was this ayah revealed at this time? Remember, it's been mentioned, many people read the Quran and they go astray. How could that be possible? You read the Kalam of Allah and you go astray. Because you don't know the translation, you don't know the meaning, you might have taken the literal meaning of that. But what was the reason for the ayah? What happened at that time that Allah revealed the ayah in that situation? You know? So we need to make sure that we always take the, the ayah of the Quran, translation, commentary, you know, what happened that time, if any waqiyas took place at that time, why was the ayah revealed? That's why it's very important that we read from the correct Sunni ulama as well. You know, we don't just pick up anything from Google or anywhere like that and we start reading the Quran, no. Make sure it's from an authentic Sunni scholar, translation, commentary, Qazul Ibad, Nurul Irfan, Siratul Jinnah, there are many, alhamdulillah, which have been published by Dawat Islami as well. We need to make sure we get these right translation of the Quran for us and for our children. Mashallah. We don't want to be taking the Quran and astaghfirullah taking the wrong translation, the wrong meaning, and going astray. Mashallah. My dear respect viewers of Madani Shain, from these blessed ayahs of Quran, we can easily establish the fact how important it is to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. It clearly tells us about the importance of doing ittiba of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And clearly mentioned, if we want to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we want that we have got that uh, love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it uh, further enlightens our heart. What is the way forward? The way forward is doing ittiba of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. In return, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love us. 
One thing is, we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another fact is, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us. So, dear respect, if we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love us, what should we do? We should follow. We should do ittiba of Rasul alayhi salatu wa salam. We should obey Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa salam. And this is a clear message from Quran, what we learn that equally important is Sunnah of Rasul alayhi salatu wa salam. When you are following the commandments of Quran, you should also at the same time understand what Quran is telling us, commanding us that we should follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And rightfully said, mashallah, Mubalik of Dawud Islam mentioned that following Sunnah is other way of implementing Quran in your life. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam's seerah is commentary of Quran, in other words. His sunnah is, in other words, the shrih of Quran. Quran has been explained practically by the sunnah of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. And if you want to phrase this way, that Quran is theory and practical is the life of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam, I don't think it would be wrong to say. So we should understand that without the sunnah, without the um, Subhanallah, seerah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, uswa of Rasul alayhi salatu wa salam, we can never understand Quran correctly. And this is uh, so important. For this, I would like to give one example, Waqqas. Quran has mentioned, aqimu salah wa atu zakah. Many times you would read this ayah, right? Establish salah, right? Give zakah. This commandment is there in Quran. But does Quran talk about the details of offering salah? Does Quran talk about the details of giving zakah? Does Quran talk about how many rakah in Fajr, uh, Zuhr, Asr, Maghrib, or Isha you have to offer? Right? What would be the way to offer? How would you stand? How would you do ruku? How would you do sujood? Right? How would you sit down uh, in tashahud? So this is the complete method of offering salah is learned through the sunnah of Rasul alayhi salatu So if you think about it as well, but that is a practical <coughs> example you've given that without Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sunnah, we would not even know how to read the bars. True. We've got the commandment to read the bars. How to read it, when to read it, what's the time is of it, as you said, what's the rakat to read it, you know, the prostration, how to actually physically okay. way to read it. So one is having a commandment and one is theory and one is practical sure. observation. So we must see the importance of following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As we mentioned, Allah says in the Holy Quran in Surah Muhammad, O you who believe, obey Allah and obey the Messenger, and let not your deeds go to waste. Allah Akbar. It's also been mentioned in the Holy Quran, He who obeys the Messenger, then verily he has obeyed Allah. So if the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives you an order, obey it. You are obeying Allah. That thing might not be in the Quran. You know, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have told you to do something. And there's many accounts which has happened like this. There was once an account of Suraka bin Malik. Okay. Suraka bin Malik, before he accepted Islam, it was said that whoever Allah kills the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, will be rewarded with so many animals. Suraka bin Malik attempted, you know, he got out his animal and he attempted to kill the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once, twice, three times. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him that, Oh Suraka, you tried to kill me. I see the bangers, gold bangers of Kasir and Kisra in your arms. Allah. Some time passed after the apparent demise of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there was a battle. And Suraka bin Malik, he, that time he, by then he had accepted Islam. He says to the Muslims that, put me into this catapult and throw me into the building. You know, behind, people are, were throwing arrows at the Muslims from a high place. He said, put me into this catapult, you know when you throw stones with over in the older days, and throw me into the building. They said, what's wrong with you? If we throw you firstly, you're going to get injured. And secondly, if you go in there, they might kill you. He said, no. The Prophet sallallahu said, I see the gold bangles in your arms. I haven't got gold bangles yet. I can't be killed yet. Look at his yaqeen right. or the saying of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa What happens? They throw him in. He gets in. He opens the doors. The Muslims go in and they win the battle. At that time, the gold bangles were put in on the arms of Suraka bin Malik. Gold bangles is prohibited for men to wear. True. But the Prophet said, I see the gold bangles in your arms. In a way, if you think that's not mentioned in the Quran, we're not allowed to wear it. But that was the order of the Prophet. So the gold bangles were put in his arms. Why? Because the Sahaba knew this. 
What does the Sahaba do? He who obeys the Messenger, verily he has obeyed Allah. Apparently, it's against the command of Allah in the Quran. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that, the Sahaba did that, they knew this ayah. They knew the meaning of this ayah. That whoever obeys the Messenger, they verily he has obeyed Allah. See the yaqeen, authenticity that the Sahaba knew of acting upon what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. And there are many, many uh, waqiyats and many accounts which happened where we can see the love of the Sahaba ikram alayhi wa dhuan in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah, subhanallah. We'll come uh, to those accounts in uh, class by. Another important example I would like to share with you is Madani Chen. And that is, uh, Quran mentions the ahkam of hajj, right? There are many detailed ahkam, rulings of ritual Hajj, performing Hajj, going to Hajj. But this is not mentioned in Quran itself. Sayings of Prophet wasallam told us the details of performing Hajj. Even the day of Hajj, it is mentioned in the hadith. Now, Rasulullah wasallam's hadith, Rasulullah wasallam is saying, Rasulullah wasallam's practical uh, uh, actions this is a sunnah of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam and it holds a very, you see, important weightage in order to understand the teachings of Islam. Without the sunnah, without the hadith of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, Islam is incomplete in other words. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did the sharih of Quran, completed the, the detailed meanings of the commandments of Quran by his blessed sunnah. So this is very important to understand how important it is. And once we understand some importance of anything, then only we can act upon. Then only we can follow that. So that's the main idea of uh, bringing this very important topic and doing discussion on this. Furthermore, uh, Sahaba Ikram Alim Ridwan, they actually had knowledge. They had understood Quran. They had understood the teachings of Islam and they were taught by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we see the seerah of Sahaba Ikram alayhi wa they seem to follow the commandments of Rasul alayhi salatu wa sallam. They seem to copy Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa sallam. In every uh, possible manner you see Sahaba Ikram alayhi wa they are following sunnah of Rasul alayhi salatu wa sallam. A beautiful sentence was uh, said that Sahaba Ikram, they used to do and act because that was Sunnah. Subhanallah. Right? And today, unfortunately, we miss and act because it is a Sunnah. People say today, you know, it's not for the upon us, it's not a it's just a Sunnah. Yeah. That's it's something small. Which, as you said, the Sahaba used to do something even so small that might seem to us. If they saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi do it, they would act upon it straight away. Subhanallah. You know, they, they lived with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They walked with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They ate with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Every part of their life, they were with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They used to document what they used to see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do. It's been mentioned that once there was a Sahabi, he was riding on his animal. He got to a certain place and he went like this and he went down. Like that there was something there he had to duck under. The people asked him, what is this? Why are you ducking under? There's nothing there. He says, once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was riding on his animal in this place, there was a tree here. The branch was hanging and he sallallahu alayhi wa ducked under the branch. Allah. I am following the act of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. Can you see? There's no tree here today. There's no apparent reason to do the way he was doing it. That was just because the love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is how much the Sahaba loved the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they followed the sunnah. They copied the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whatever they saw, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do, do, they were trying to act upon that straight away. You know, even to the extent it's mentioned about uh, Sayyidina Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala. Once he was doing wudu, and he smiled at a certain place. He said, why are you smiling? What's the reason? You're in the middle of wudu. He said, once I saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sit here and smile, I was smiling as well. After wudu. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So this is just amazing, you know. Just smiling after doing wudu. Why? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam smiled. You know, this is true Ishqi Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. True love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which unfortunately today we see going away from a lot of youth, especially today you see. You know, they leave sunnah as the way they do their salah or the sunnah of salah or keeping the bed or wearing the imamah. Oh, it's just a sunnah. As, it's, yeah. as if it's not important, yeah. you, know, you have to think that this is a sunnah and you are obeying Allah and His beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As I mentioned before, if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told us to wear the imamah, 
do it, you are obeying the Prophet and Allah Azza wa Jalla as well. Sometimes our youth, our youngsters, when you tell them it is a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they seem to find a reason behind that. They try to search what is the logic behind it, why should I follow it? Okay. And they will say, okay, if you're doing this, why should I do this? What is the logic behind it? This is also a mentality. But from the seerah of Sayyidina Uthmani Ghani radiallahu ta'ala and as you mentioned, that he was sitting, performing wudu, and after performing wudu, he smiled. Apparently, you don't find any logic behind that. This is called love of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. This is called that you are following Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam without any apparent logic. You're just copying because your beloved did this and you're doing it. right? And the message... His earlier account was mentioned that a Sahabi a Rasul, uh, when, while he was riding an animal, right, he uh, just put his head down and he went th uh, through. The reason, apparent reason doesn't seem uh, or tell us that there was any logic behind it or any reason behind to do that act. But again, this was the love of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, And they had known the importance of sunnah. They had heard these ayahs of Quran which were earlier mentioned that how important it is to follow Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. In these acts when they were following with commitment, can you imagine how much uh, strongly they would follow the rest of the sunnahs of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam? How uh, with uh, true love they would follow and do ittiba of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam? What would you say to those youngsters when they've got this mentality? For us, it's not to judge, you know, what's the logic behind it? If Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does something, that's a form of worship for us to do it as well. Whatever he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does becomes a sunnah for us to implement in our lives. When you start looking for logics, then there's many things around the world you see, there's no logic to it. But everything the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam done or mentioned in the Quran, there's nothing that he done without any purpose. There could, be, there could be some logic also, but not necessarily we know every of logic. Course, yeah. right? Who are but, we to know everything? Yeah. We don't know everything. Yeah. But, but if, if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does it, who is that is authentic for us. He is a road model for us. That is authentic for us. Whatever we see him do, we just do that. Don't question it. The more you question it, the more confused you get yourself. You you heard something, it's been authentic hadith, act upon it. That's it. It's been mentioned, remember as well, but it says that the Prophet said, Whoever loved my Sunnah loved me. Subhanallah. Whoever loved me would be in Jannah with me. Would be in Jannah. Subhanallah. So what else do we want? We have to love the Sunnah. Not just do it, but love it. You know what you're doing? Why are you doing that thing? You might be doing the Sunnah. Have you got love for that sunnah? That I'm doing it because I love the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Have actual, you know, actual love for that sunnah. You do the miswak, for example. Why don't you just do the miswak? What is having love for that miswak? I'm doing this miswak because it's the act of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When you taught the Imam, what are you going to taught the Imam? What is your intentions behind taught this Imam? Why are you taught this Imam? Because it's a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You see, whenever you do something, whenever you are acting upon sunnah. Take a couple of seconds and think about your intentions. Why am I doing this act? Have love for that, inshallah, we will be with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannah, inshallah. Well, Qasbe, uh, you mentioned a beautiful hadith of Rasul alayhi salatu wa salam, that Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa salam said, uh, loving my sunnah is another word of loving me. Whoever loved my sunnah, he loves loved me. me or loves me. And he will go with me in Jannah. He will be with me in Jannah. Now, having known this beautiful hadith of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, we come to know that if we want the closeness of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa wasalam in Jannah, if we want that company of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam in Jannah, what is the way forward? What is the formula? What uh, is the solution given to us by Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam? That is again, Following the sunnah of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam is in fact loving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So the one who followed the sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is in fact the true devotee of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in result, as a reward inshallah, he will get Jannah. Not only Jannah, he will have the company of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam in Jannah inshallah. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said he will be with me in Jannah. It's always mentioned in Surah Hashar. It's the translation is, and what the messenger gives you, take it. And what he forbids you, and abstain from it. Whatever the Prophet gives you, whether it be a sunnah, 
whether he says something, whether he acts upon something that you see, take it. And whatever he stops you from you. So this, in other words, the Quran is telling us that don't just follow what's in the Quran. What the messenger gives you, take it. What he forbids you, abstain from it. So we have been told to the Prophet ﷺ has the authority to give us and make us abstain from certain things which we must follow as well. So for example, we mentioned different sunnahs. What is the sunnah which the Prophet ﷺ said, do this? Uh, for example, if he tells us to do something. What is, if you see the Prophet ﷺ do something, that's also. He did, maybe he didn't say something, but the Sahaba ﷺ saw him. Yeah. They saw him do something and they copied it. What is, if somebody does something and the Prophet ﷺ stays quiet, doesn't stop you from doing that, that's also permissible for us. Otherwise, if that was wrong, then the Prophet ﷺ would have stopped the person from doing that. Yeah. So these things are different ways of the authority of the Prophet ﷺ for giving us things and us to take it. And when he has to tell us to stay away from things, to stay away from haram things, don't go to these places, whatever the Prophet ﷺ has told us, stay away from music, stay away from earning haram earnings, stay away from doing bad things, backbiting, lying, taunting, jealousy, hatred, malice, stay away from these things, we have been told to abstain from it. So, you know, Islam and Sunnah is not just Quran or what the Prophet ﷺ actually said as well. It's the way he ﷺ was. How was he with his family? How was he in trade? How was he with his children? How was he with his grandchildren? You know, we hear about these, these stories of the Prophet wasallam. but how much do we actually implement that in our life? True. With our children, for example, you know, the Prophet wasallam was so loving to his children. You know, for example, when he wasallam used to go and do this mention that his grandson used to come and climb on his back. You know? If our children come and climb on my back, what do you do? Why are you climbing on my back? Don't you know we do salah? When that child is coming closer to you, coming closer to the prayer mat, and we chuck him away. You know, the, how the Prophet was with, with his wife you know, in the house. So many things that we need to look for and implement that in our life as well, inshallah. In you know, our space, sometimes we claim that we love Rasulullah. We, we say that we are devotees of Prophet. Shaqani Rasul, we have got Ishqi Rasul, we have got love of Rasul والسلام, in our hearts. But what is the criteria? What is the yardstick? What is the standard that one will be judged whether he is true Ashiq Rasul, whether he is true devotee of Prophet or not? I think the yardstick, I think the standard mi'ar to judge someone whether he has that love in his heart is again the Sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Of course. How devotionally he follows Rasulullah wasallam. I think that is the fact which will establish that somebody is uh, Ashiq Rasul and devotee of Prophet wasallam or not. Yes, if sir. someone misses Sunnah, if someone doesn't follow Sunnah, if, we, if someone does not do Ittiba of Rasul wasallam, but merely claims all the time that I am the devotee of Rasul wasallam, but his claim does not have any proof with it because every claim has got proof. If you go to uh, even uh, to a court, right? If you claim something, then you should produce some sort of, uh, you see, proofs with that, dalail with that. So, with the claim of loving Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, the dalil, the proof, the evidence for that claim is sunnah of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, and implementing that sunnah in your life, this will establish the fact whether you have got that love of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam or not and the way you are following and you, you are understanding the true importance of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. Uh, once I was hearing a bayan of our Mubalik uh, of Dawat Islami, Haji Khalid Bhai. He said that if someone says, I love my parents so much, I love them so much, right? I've got so much love in my heart for my parents. But if the same parents, they say, come do this thing or do me a favor, do this work or say, sorry, I can't do that. Will that be justified that that person loves the parents? If he loves, if he keeps on saying, I love my parents, but when parents, they say something to do, and he's not ready to do that, every wise person will say that his claim of loving his parents is not true. He's saying that I love them, but he's not listening to them. He's not following their commandments. He's not ready to do something what they're asking for. So likewise, if we say that we love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we're ready to do anything for Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. We've got true love for Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. But when it comes to offer salah, 
That is also sunnah of Rasul alayhi salatu salam, meaning Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam practically showed us how to do it. When it comes to be uh, following the sunnah of Rasul alayhi salatu salam at our workplace, being honest, not doing fraud. Right? At that moment we should also remember Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's teachings. When we are at home, how to deal with our family, then we should remember Rasulullah alayhi salatu salam's teachings. One point here is what you mentioned about salah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that salah is the coolest of my eyes. Allah you can't claim to be a lover and an ashik of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and salah. Yeah. The two, they don't go together. True. You know, an, an ashik, if you're an ashik, you're a lover of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you never miss salah. True. But unfortunately, as I said at the beginning, talk is cheap. To say something is very easy. To do it, to implement it is harder. So we need to be practicing you know, practical Muslims and be true lovers and follow everything that the Prophet ﷺ told us to do, that will make us a true ashik and rasul. People be- lying, backbiting, tale telling, gossiping, whatever you want to do, you're ready to do that. I don't think you are giving a true message of Islam to the world as well. People will say that he is Muslim. People will say that he is uh, the slave of the Prophet ﷺ. Or in other words, he is the follower of uh, Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. But through our actions, what message are we giving to them? Because we are ambassadors of Islam, isn't it? Our action will speak how good we are or how bad we are. But in effect, our actions, they speak that the teachings we are following. The teachings are not wrong. It is our action which is wrong. Because we are not following the true teachings of Islam. We are not following the true sunnah of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. The beautiful couplet, Waqqas bhai. فَنَا اِتْنَا تُو ہو جاؤں میں تیری ذاتِ عالی میں جو مجھ کو دیکھ لے اس کو تیرا دیدار ہو جائے سبحان اللہ بیٹیفل پوئٹ ہے کہ اگر آپ ایک لوگ کے پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم آپ کے رسول آپ کو لکھ لکھ پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم آپ کو لکھ لکھ پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم آپ کو لکھ لکھ پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم آپ کو لکھ لکھ پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم آپ کو لکھ لکھ پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم آپ کو لکھ لکھ پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم آپ کو لکھ لکھ پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم آپ کو I'm a lover, but I don't look like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm a lover, but I do fraud and cheating in my business. I'm a lover of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but I don't act upon it on any of his sunnahs. What kind of lover is that? Because there was a person, okay, his, his name was Muhammad. And there was a non-Muslim, when he dealt with him, there was dealings of maybe work or business or some sort of dealings were there. And when that non-Muslim saw the character of that person who was named as Muhammad, now when, after de- having dealings with him, he said that this is Muhammad. He said, if this person who is named after Muhammad is such a nice person, how would and how great would be the, the real Muhammad? After knowing this, after seeing the character of that individual, whose name was after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he accepted Islam. People, they look at us, okay, they do not read Quran. In fact, non-Muslims I'm talking about. Maybe they have not read Quran, but what they are looking at us, the way we are behaving, the way we are dealing with people, what is our character? That's how they judge what Islam is telling. But in fact, they should read Right? They should see what the teachings of Islam are, what is the sunnah of Rasulullah But if we follow the true teachings of Islam, that was the reason why the time of Sahaba Ikram, Islam spread so quickly everywhere, subhanAllah. Because the early they early used ages. to follow Rasulullah In the early ages, how Islam was spread was through business people. Yes, you know, they used to go, their and go and do trade in other cities, in other countries. And their honesty, fair dealing. their fair dealings, their honesty. People who were so attracted to the honesty and the fair dealings of Muslims, they would say, look how great these people are, look how great their religion must be, let's accept this religion as well. But what happened today? We have left the teachings of the Quran, we have left the teachings of the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, in our business, we dishonest. We say, oh, this is the cheapest, I'm making a loss. Many people, you go to you know, give us some discount. No, no, I'm making a loss. I'm not making any profit of this. You know, or they say, for example, certain things that, you know, if somebody, in their, what they are selling, it's not 100% you know, legit things. They might you know, mix something which is not p- clean or not the right things in that, you know, whatever they are selling as well. There are many things that we do in our businesses, and our dishonesty and our lying and our fraud and our deceit, selling the wrong things, which has taken us away from the teachings of the Quran and Sunnah. So we need to see in our daily lives, in our businesses, we must be honest. You know? And today we do whatever it takes to get money. 
It doesn't matter if it's halal or haram, if it's we tell the truth or we lie. As long as money is coming, you know, as long as my bank balance is increasing, as long as I've got a nice house, it doesn't matter if it's halal or haram. This is very right. unfortunate today. So we must make sure that we follow the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, to see barakah in this life and in the hereafter as well, inshallah. Mukhasbe, when we are talking about the importance of Sunnah, importance of Sunnah is equally important in all walks of fields, right? For example, it is not just a sunnah to wear Imam Sharif, keeping beard, following Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in terms of wearing your clothing. These are also beautiful sunnahs of Rasul alaihi salatu wasalam. We should follow. We should, if we love Rasulullah alaihi salatu wasalam, we should adopt these beautiful sunnahs too. But it is also a beautiful sunnah to tell truth. It is also a beautiful sunnah to do fair dealings. It is also a beautiful sunnah to uh, respect your parents, right? Because it is the teachings of Rasulullah to love your parents, to respect your elder brother, okay? And to follow the teachings of Islam, there are so many other dimensions of sunnah, which normally when we talk about people, they say that, why don't you talk on these issues? I would like to request you if you could shed some light on this issue also, that it is also a sunnah to... Uh, speak truth, not to backbite, not to tell lie, not to do fraud, not to hurt someone's feelings, right? not to snatch someone's money, illegitimate, uh, you see, getting someone's wealth. These are also important sunnahs of Rasul, a prophetic way, how should we live our life? What would you say? So the issue is that, as I said earlier, we have left the teachings of the Quran and Sunnah we don't have time for ilm and to the knowledge of Islam today. Sure. Many people, they don't know what the definition is of backbiting. Yeah. You know, they're sitting gatherings, the whole gatherings will be full of backbiting. Mm. You know, lying, tale-telling. You know, most people, if the views of Madhya channel, ask yourself, when was the last time I sat in a gathering and I didn't talk about a third person? Yeah. What are our gatherings full of? Negative talking. Negative, you know, deceit about other people, lying about them and, you know, blaming them backbiting against them. So this, we must make sure that we learn the knowledge of Islam to what the Prophet said about lying, about backbiting, about tail-telling, about jealousy, about envy, all these things. And these are diseases of the heart. There are some of physical diseases which you can see. These you can't apparently see, but this is eating up the person inside. These, you know, diseases of the heart, which is, makes us, you know, the people that we are today, unfortunately, we have left the Quran teachings of the Quran, we have left the teachings of the Sunnah, and this is the reason why the Muslims are in trouble today. This is why the Muslims are where we are today, because we have left these teachings which the Prophet gave us. Look all over the world, don't we see these Muslims in trouble? Why? If you look at behind it, you will see that they have left the teachings of the Quran and Sunnah. True. If we had to hold firm to the Quran and Sunnah, if today there was thus a Quran and thus a Hadith in our homes today, just imagine where the Muslims will be. But ask ourselves, where was the last time we opened the Quran? When was the last knowledge. time, you know, we opened a book of Hadith? When was the last time we done anything Islamically? You know, we are ready to read massive chapters of textbooks for universities and colleges, but we can't read the Quran of Allah. You know, we are very educated at degree level and PhD level, but we don't know how to read the book of Allah. You know, it's many people read the Quran, and the Quran curses that person. Can you imagine, you're reading the Quran, the Quran is cursing you. Why? Because you are reading it wrong. You are tra changing the translation of the Quran. So this is because we are all away from the teachings of the Quran and Sunnah. So I urge you know, myself first and then the views of Madhya Chala that keep hold, hold firm onto the Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu every day, whether it be a few lines, you know, or go and pick up a qaida and learn how to read. Go to the Madhya Chala, Madhya Chala, go online, you know, Dr. Islam has his services and learn how to read the Quran and Sunnah. How to read the Quran first. Then go to the authentic books of Hadith. Read one Hadith a day, just one. You don't need to read too many. Learn it, read it, implement it in your life. Then you will see the love of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi increasing in your heart. Inshallah. Subhanallah. 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 Well, respective views of Madhuri Shain, today we are talking about importance of Sunnah. Well, Qasbe, if we talk about importance of Sunnah, another dimension I would like to bring into discussion that is today, after fourteen hundred years after the apparent life of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we saw a pandemic. And in that pandemic, 
one of the precautions which was taught by the government guidelines was to wash your hands frequently as many times as possible or keep yourself clean hygienically if you um, come uh, from outside come inside wash your hands and keep washing as many times as possible to remain safe and sound if i go back to the time of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam 1400 years ago this beautiful sunnah of rasul sallallahu alaihi wa sallam was taught us that we need to wash our hands before eating food isn't it mm -hmm. this tells us that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam 1400 years ago told us how to remain clean. Even cleanliness has been declared as half of our faith. Shabbat. This is the beauty of our religion. And these are the teachings of Rasul alayhi salatu wa salam that how important it is to remain clean. How important is cleanliness. And this pandemic has taught us the lesson how important this beautiful sunnah is before eating your food you should wash your hands and after eating your food you should also wash your hands an account Amir of Allah sunnah is mentioned in his book and that is once a truck driver okay he went to a hotel right there are certain hotels on the road they park and they eat food now he went there he ate food his condition deteriorated now um, and after a few minutes or some, people came, rushed towards him, and he expired. He died. Now, when the reason of death was found, what happened to this person? Because other people, they were also eating the same food. Nothing happened to them. But what happened to him? That after eating food, he died. Later on, it was discovered that the truck he had parked, he had checked that truck's tire a while ago before eating food and a snake was killed under that tire of the truck and poison was contaminated with that tire and because he was checking his tires before eating food he had touched that tire and poison had contaminated with his hands and because of that when he did not wash his hands and straight away went to food and he ate and he died. Now this tells us how important it is to follow the sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even to remain protected. These are the teachings of Islam. We're talking about wuzu this one, right? You know, Shaykh Tariqat Abir al-Sulat Dhamul Warkatul Aliyah, he has written a booklet, Wuzu and Science. You know, at the beginning we said that nothing that Allah and His beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given us is without any purpose. Is baseless. Everything has a purpose and a benefit. There are many benefits of doing wuzu. Scientific benefits you're talking about. Scientific benefits. It's been mentioned in this rasala that a heart specialist remarked with assurance that if a patient makes wuzu, then his blood pressure is checked, his blood pressure would definitely be lower. So those who have blood pressure, many people today complain of high blood pressure. Remain in the state of wuzu, inshallah, you'll see. No, your blood pressure will lower and you will feel better as well, inshallah. Even the order of washing the body parts, you know, why do we wash the hands first, at the mouth, at the nose? The order of the body parts during wuzu is beneficial. Washing of the hands at the beginning alerts the nervous system, causing the veins of the face and the brain to feel its effects gradually. Right. So can you see the body, That's the right. brain is seeing that, look, okay, it's starting now. So your brain system is getting active as well. The order of washing the hands, then rinsing the mouth and sniffing water into the nose and then washing the face and other body parts reduces the risk of paralysis. So those people become paralyzed. You know, Alhamdulillah, this is the benefit of wuzu. We might not see these things. You know, the viewers of Malik channel, oh, why do we do wuzu? What's the need to do wuzu? Why do you have to wash all these body parts? Can you see how much scientific benefit there is that in the things that Allah and Habib وسلم, has given to us? Also, cleanliness generally uses the miswak. You know, today, that's another sunnah which is dying out today. You know, remember the Prophet said that the one who, who acts upon my sunnah when he's dying out that sunnah, when he's finishing, will get the rewards of 100 martyrs. 100 martyrs. And oh, that wow. one that thing is, which is sunnah is trying, trying, going out slowly, slowly, is the sunnah of miswak, which is unfortunate. The benefit of that is keeping your teeth clean. And the other is, it strengthens your memory. It strengthens your memory by doing miswak. There's two beautiful hadiths. The Prophet said 
The Prophet ﷺ entered his blessed home. He ﷺ would use miswak first. So we need to come. This is how about cleanliness of the Prophet ﷺ, how he would keep clean. When he come into his he home, was already pure and clean. But he did this for us. Isn't of it? course, he didn't need to do these things, but just to teach us, to teach his ummah how much love he had for us. Whenever the greatest Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam woke up from his sleep, he sallallahu alaihi wasallam would use miswak. So you know we should also implement this sunnah in our life as well of using miswak. Inshallah, It's It's also been mentioned. Physicians have said sometimes sores develop in the mouth due to stomach acidity or the heat, and the result in the spread of particular type of germs in the mouth. To cure this infection. Chew a fresh miswak and move the saliva around the mouth for a few minutes. By doing this, several patients have been cured. So can Subhanallah. you see the health benefits of this? Patients of paralysis, high blood pressure are cured through doing wuzu, through using the miswak. These are the benefits that we get from Islam and our deed, which the Prophet ﷺ has given us. Subhanallah. Respective viewers of Madhuri Chain, we heard about miswak. You can use a toothbrush, a toothpaste, uh, yes, you can use, but at the same time, you should use miswak also because the benefits which miswak has, you may not get them through toothbrush or toothpaste. You can do, you can use them, no, no problem whatsoever. But in addition to that, you should not miss this beautiful sunnah of miswak because miswak has the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another benefit of miswak which is mentioned is that. Inshallah, the person who uses miswak, Inshallah, he will die on Iman. But what more do we want? What do, this what? is the treasure that we have to raise our Subhanallah. Iman. Subhanallah. If just by implementing this sunnah, we get to die on Iman, what more do we want? And so, the most important thing one should understand, Rukaz Bay, is that it is sunnah. Because Rasulullah did, that's why I'm using it. Right. Getting your mouth clean, right? Oral hygiene, you want, you can get it even through. Uh, toothpaste or toothbrush, right? But because you love Rasulullah you are doing this with that intention because my Rasulullah did it, I love him, my beloved did it, and I want to follow him, and I'm doing it. In addition to that, the more benefits of getting reward, you will also get the health benefits which have been uh, discovered by the scientist you just mentioned. And uh, at the end of this program, I would like to give this message. If we love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if we claim that we love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the very important thing what we need to have in our mind is the importance of sunnah. Once this importance is in our heart, in our mind, then inshallah it will be easier for us to follow. One way of doing it is to think in a way that you will remember Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam every time you act upon the sunnah. If you're walking, you remember that I'm walking because Rasulullah used to walk like this. Then you will remember Rasulullah If you're eating, you will remember Rasulullah because you're following his sunnah. Right? If you're going to sleep and you sleep the way Rasulullah would sleep, you will remember Rasulullah right? If you are talking, if you're walking, if you're sleeping, Allahu Akbar, if anything you're doing in your life, if you make your life routine according to the sunnah of Rasulullah wasalam, this will help you to do dhikr of Mustafa wasalam, remembrance of Mustafa wasalam, and what else more we need if we are always in the thoughts of Rasul in the remembrance of Rasulullah and inshallah this is the salvation this is the actual uh, life what we want for this world and the hereafter because best role model is the life of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. What is the last message from you? So by, there is no other personality in history who has been written about, talked about, thought about, followed more than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's no more books about any personality than there is of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So my message to the views of Badi Chal will be learn about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Learn about his seerah. Learn about his life, everything that we've talked about today. Learn about that and teach your children as well. And make sure that this is the role model for our children. Unfortunately, today the role models are who? Footballers, cricketers, musicians, actors. These are our children's role models today. Learn, sit down for two minutes, five minutes a day, and learn one sunnah of the Prophet and tell your children, this is your role model. 
This is the ideal role model. This is who you need to be like. Inshallah, you see the benefits of this dunya and the akhirah as well, inshallah. Jazakallah. Sahaba al-Kiram, Anih Miridwan, used to follow something because it was sunnah. And unfortunately, we miss something because it is sunnah. We shouldn't do it that way. That's the message of the day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our effort, give us importance of sunnah. That's all for today. We'll be back with another beautiful episode of this program, The Way of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Next week, same time, same channel. Keep watching Madani channel. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the best of all creation Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the best of all creation